What's up guys, Cameron here from Drums and Drams. Today we've got another whiskey review from my hotel room here in Buffalo, New York. It's probably gonna be my last review from this room. And just like the others, most likely will be unedited or just very minimally edited. The bottle that I'm gonna be taking a look at today is another one that I've actually found bourbon hunting here in Buffalo. And that is Larceny Barrel Proof Batch C923 coming in at 126.4 proof or 63.2% ABV. Strangely enough, this bottle is all over the place here in Buffalo. I saw it at least at three different locations, if not four, ranging between $65 and $75. That's not bad. I think the SRP here is 60 bucks. So five to $15 over SRP, really not a bad shake. Anyways, um, tasted this already on my live stream a few days ago. Had some interesting, you know, interesting opinions about it. If you know me, you know I'm not the biggest fan of Larceny Barrel Proof, just kind of across the board. Since the inception of this, you know, brand extension in 2020, I hated it in the beginning. Batch B521 kind of opened me up. It was a little sweeter, a little bit of a, I don't know, more representative batch of what I expected from the brand. But looking forward to C922, that batch wasn't just good for a Larceny Barrel Proof, in my opinion, it was a damn good whiskey. So I wanna say that up front. I don't hate all Larceny Barrel Proofs. I think they range from mediocre to just pretty good whiskey. C922 just blew me away for some reason. So I have backups upon backups of that bottle. I think it's great stuff. B523, the previous release, is one that I have not reviewed here on the channel in a formal review video but I did taste it, I really like it, and everybody out in the uh, in the world, in the whiskey enthusiast world, seemed, seems to think that B523 might be the best batch. I don't agree with that. I think C922 is still my favorite. I do like B523, like I said, and hopefully in a future video, I will do a blind flight of all of the 2023 releases. Maybe I'll throw C922 in the mix as well, I don't know. But for right now, let's just take a look at C923 see what we get here. So on the nose, 126.4 proof. Let's see what we get. All right, so this is an interesting nose and it's not something that I've ever really picked up on on a previous batch of Larceny Barrel Proof. It's a super buttery nose. And I think the best way I can describe this is to just, is to just say that it smells like butter. Right, it's not butter cream frosting. It's it's not some other form of butter, I guess. Like to me, this is just pure butter in a glass. Yes, there are spices, there are other notes in here, but the top note that I'm getting is just like a stick of butter. And it's so strange to me. I've, I've only picked this up on a few other whiskeys quite like in this kind of a distinct way, but it's definitely here in the C923. Yeah, so there are also, like I said, regular bourbon notes in here. There's a ton of cinnamon, and this is a very common note for Larceny Barrel Proof when you're looking at presumably six to eight year old weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill. So a lot of cinnamon, it's very buttery. I'm also getting kind of a burnt wheat bread note. This is a weeded bourbon, but sometimes on weeders, you don't necessarily smell the wheat grain distinctly, you get maybe like a funk or something that makes you think that it's different than a rye bourbon. But in the case of this Larceny Barrel Proof, I can smell wheat bread. I mean, very distinctly, but it smells burnt. So burnt wheat bread, like fresh butter and cinnamon. I mean, like these notes sound like they might be okay in certain contexts, but when you put them together, it's not necessarily my favorite uh, my favorite nose for a bourbon, I guess. And the last thing I wanna say before I forget is that I actually kinda get a little marzipan on here. It's not a note that I call often, if ever, but I kinda have a little marzipan vibe going on here and it, and it actually works in with like the buttery note that I'm talking about. They kinda remind me of each other. They work together in some way on the nose here. So anyways, let's go in for the, the palette now and see what we get, cheers. Interesting. So the palette on this is really easy going. 126.4 is on the higher or highest end 
I think I think there may have been a batch or two above this in proof, but it's on the higher end of of the proof uh, spectrum. I'm tripping over my words, guys, but unedited video, we got to do it. Uh, it's on the higher end of the proof spectrum for Larceny Barrel Proof, but it doesn't drink that way. To me, this is like super easy going, and I actually really like that about this whiskey or any whiskey in general. If it drinks under its proof, but it's still full of flavor, I like that. It just, it's a more enjoyable experience all the way around. So kudos uh, to whoever blended this on the actual like drinking experience of the whiskey. But some of these notes, maybe it's a subjective thing, just not the biggest fan of them. Anyway, second sip. Yeah, big cinnamon front of the palate, humongous cinnamon notes. I'm actually getting some tobacco on this one. Some Larceny Barrel Proofs can kind of get towards dark fruits. You know, they can be oaky like C922. I don't know that I have ever called out a tobacco note like I'm getting on the C923. It's kind of disjunct. It doesn't work super well together. I, I think this will appeal to a lot of people because it's different. And I, and I really respect the fact that this is a kind of out there batch of Larceny Barrel Proof, but it's not out there in the sense that it tastes like sawdust or super young whiskey or like raw wood. These are qualities of previous Larceny Barrel Proofs that I haven't enjoyed. I, I like the fact that it's, that it's different. And I think because it is different and it has these weirdly distinct notes, it will appeal to a lot of specific audiences of people that like buttery whiskey or like cinnamon forward whiskey or like stuff that drinks easy or like tobacco, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know that like, I don't know that really discerning, and I, don't, I hope I don't say this the wrong way, but people that are really like discerning whiskey enthusiasts, I think a lot of them are gonna look at this batch and go, wow, this is super disjunct. But maybe someone else that picks it up instead of that week buying a Maker's Mark cast strength is gonna go, wow, this is really different. And I love the cinnamon, and that cinnamon note is also in Maker's Mark cast strength, so I really like this batch. I think, you know, you're gonna hit a, a, a slew of different audiences, and it's gonna be an interesting reaction, I think. I haven't seen any reviews of this batch yet. I'm sure they're out there. I'm gonna be curious to see what others say about it. Um, yeah, anyways, let's do one last sip here, and then we're gonna wrap this up. Like, part of me, part of me likes this whiskey because it's so weird. It's so all over the place. It's so, um, it's so easy drinking. I, I like that about it. But this buttery thing, this marzipan thing is making me think that there might be really young whiskey in the mix. And I, there, there probably isn't. I mean, six years is not particularly old, but the, the rumor is that this is six to eight years old it feels like there could be some really young whiskey because I'm getting this brighter buttery thing. I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. Like, do I recommend this whiskey? At SRP, if you collect Larceny Barrel Proofs, yeah, sure. You know, if if spending 60 to let's say $80 on a whiskey isn't really a big financial hit for you and you just want to explore some new things, sure. If this is your one whiskey purchase of the month, no, I would say you, you should pass on this. And before I continue uh, rambling on about this, I'm actually getting kind of a, uh, like a cinnamon covered pear note. There's a kind of a little fruitiness in here. I haven't mentioned really any fruit notes to this point in this review. There is a little like pear note going on in here. So keep an eye out for that if you do get the chance to try this. Let me know what you think of this whiskey. I think it is a loose recommend depending on your circumstances, depending on what flavor profiles you like. But if you want a comprehensive whiskey, this is not really that. This is just an interesting exploration of a lot of disjunct flavors going on in one whiskey, but I don't hate it. So take that advice for, you know, however you will. Uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you didn't, don't hit that like button because this was probably a very average video. I'm in a hotel room and I've been filming reviews, and I'm a little tipsy at this point. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content that's better than this, I promise. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time here on Drums and Grams. Cheers.